is. So yesterday uh, we had new inflation data, which is uh, shaking up people's thinking about what the Federal Reserve is going to do when it comes to uh, interest rates going forward, uh, which that has a it just reverberates all throughout uh, the rest of the economy. So we can put up this uh, first element here. So consumer prices rose basically a little faster than they were expected. You know, 0.4 percent in February, which was 3.2 percent, 3.2 rate slightly higher than expected you know uh, year year over year uh, you, you saw uh, rent and housing continue to be uh, conti- continue its surge you saw uh, well, gas prices um, contributing to this uh, this inflation spike even if you take gas prices out you started seeing this and so over the last roughly year in uh, wage wage growth and particularly wage growth at the bottom has been outpacing inflation. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing. Absolutely. Like that's the direction uh, that you want to go. The several years before that, uh, coming out of the pandemic, inflation was rising faster than wages. So basically, you need several years of wages growing faster than inflation to catch back up. Because people aren't pulling prices down, except eggs, actually. (laughs) Well, as you say, and also uh, with high interest rates, you have a lot of people, especially in lower income brackets, who went into debt because Mm -hmm. they were laid off during the pandemic. So many service workers, people in that position, paying high interest rates. So not only does wage growth have to be steady for years, uh, you then also have these high interest rates that are compounding the debt. I mean, it's making the debt worse and worse and a deeper and deeper hole to climb out of. So even if your wages are climbing, uh, you still are going to have a steep hill ahead of you to get out of the debt. And to go from that to then prices spiking at 9% back in 2021 and then com- coming down but not coming, but not having enough time to recover uh, is, uh, you know, sucks for sucks for this economy because you need more time um, for wages to outpace inflation. A year is not enough. Like you need like five years. Actually, I mean, to get back to a like humane economy, you would need like a hundred years of wages outpacing inflation. So let's put this next element up on the screen from Jason Furman, because Ryan, I'm curious what you made of Jason Furman's analysis. Uh, He put some of these numbers into a Basically, he was he was looking at core services, core goods, and what you're seeing, and this is important. If you're if you're watching this, you go back to about 2010, and the core goods prices are actually all the way to where they are around right now. They have this huge spike uh, around 2021, 2022, and then they've dipped now. Uh, down to where they were almost in like 2014, um, which is similar to where things were before the pandemic around 2020. Core services uh, spikes right around 2020. It was on kind of a steady climb uh, from 2012, roughly around 2010, 2012. But then where it is now is so much higher than where it has been for core services. So that's things like shelter. Um, and Furman specifically calls out shelter. So the cost of rent, the cost of housing, that is way higher than it has been in anyone's recent memory. And that is, uh, that's why some of this is so uneven. So when you're seeing Paul Krugman's analysis that actually everything's fine, um, it depends. I mean, it just really depends on who you are, what kind of uh, life you live, if you, if you own, if you rent. Uh, what your finances look like. This is a really, really tough economy uh, for a lot of people uh, and for for many people specifically because of that core services mark. That is not anywhere near where it used to be, uh, Ryan. That is is significantly higher. And and this clip of uh, Gary Cohn, who's one of uh, Trump's Goldman boys. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is on uh, CBS Face the Nation this week because I think he made a pretty good point uh, in the context of why People are feeling as though the economy isn't great, so Biden is not polling very well in the economy. Again, despite people like Paul Krugman and many, many others, actually, who have said, you know, why aren't this this optimism uh, or this pessimism that the public is experiencing is not backed up by data. The media is telling way too negative a story about the economy. Uh, Listen to Gary Cohn here. Inflation has a compounding effect, meaning as you look at inflation year over year, you're adding up those numbers. You're not starting at a zero every year. So if we had 6% inflation last year, 7% inflation, and now we have 
4% inflation, that's 10% inflation. So if you take a basket of groceries at the beginning of 2020, just a simple basic basket that cost $100, it costs well over $125 today because those 4% one year and 7% one year and 7% the next year, they add up, they're cumulative. So there's a huge cumulative effect inflation. So when people are being told, consumers, you're wrong, inflation said, no, they're right. They're completely <laughs> right. Actually they're completely expensive. right. And what they're more right about is we at least finally have gotten to the position where wage growth is faster than inflation. But we had not been there till the last few months. So yeah. people were losing purchasing power, and that's why people were angry. And then take on top of that the high interest rate environment, where if you thought you might have been in a position to buy a house because you saved money, you go out to get a mortgage at 7 or 8%, you can't afford a house.